everybody. Um, this is a kit guitar from Coven Guitars that I've been putting together over the past couple of months. Um, nice, isn't it? Uh, so the next few videos in in this series is just is just the build process of this kit guitar. Um, in summary, it is a Tele, obviously a T style guitar. Uh, it has this lovely zebra wood uh, veneer. Uh, over they say, I think they said a swamp ash body. <laughs> it's a bit heavy, mate. It's a bit heavy. So some kind of maybe an ash body. Uh, they also say an ebony fretboard. Um, that's just a shot of the headstock. Um, it is a completely stock instrument as sold, except for the tuning machines, uh, which are um, Wilkinson easy tuners. Uh, and there's, there's a story behind that, which will become apparent in the build videos. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, without further ado, uh, this is me uh, assembling uh, this kit guitar. Cheers. <laughs> So far this year, we have made one lyre harp. We have made one tenor ukulele. Very nice. But now, I'm upping the game. I am upping the game. This is a new kit. from Coburn Guitars and, and this kit has literally just been dropped off by the guy that runs this company. <laughs> He's either the guy that runs it or works for this company. I think, honestly, I think he's the owner of the company. Um, he literally just dropped it off in his van. Um, so that's uh, nice. Um, has been bought through Amazon, um, but nonetheless, yeah. Amazing, amazing, literally met him outside. Um, and he handed me the box. Happy days. The specs on this guitar are insane. In a good way. But let's just take a look at what's in the box. This is a Telecaster guitar, or hopefully it will be a Telecaster guitar in a few weeks. <laughs> How long will it take me to do this? The packaging here is like a million times different from my, the little tenor ukulele I get from, from, uh, from Amun. This actually looks quite well ordered <laughs> and the parts aren't just randomly rattling about. One neck are uh, unshaped. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's not, it's not a seven string guitar. Um, one piece neck. Now on the spec sheet, this says it's an ebony fretboard. Interesting that they've got a the um, the nut is pre-installed. I find it hard to believe this is an ebony fretboard, but that's what the spec sheet says. It looks like rosewood. I've got to be honest, but it does say ebony on the spec sheet. It's heavy. It's heavy. I don't know what flavour of C that is. Um, not quite sure. Heavy, big, heavy, solid neck. There we go. That is a telly body. Um, some kind of straight grain zebra thing going on. Um, I'll put this. Um, the, the, the wood um, 
on the uh, on the screen here. Now, again, the spec sheet says this is a swamp ash body, a swamp ash body uh, with a front and rear veneer. It's very, <laughs> it's, very, it's very attractive. That's very attractive. And what's super nice, folks? Spare veneer for testing my staining. See, that's the level of detail that you want with one of these kits. That extra little bit of thought that's gone into it. So I can cut that in half and like, you know, test stain one, test stain two. That is awesome. That is awesome. I'll be honest, that feels a bit heavy for Swamp Ash, but it is a big old telly body. Um, so we'll see. Um, apparently this is also a solderless kit. I'm just seeing some of it. I don't, I don't know if you can see into the into the, into some of these pockets here. Um, I'm seeing some kind of connectors going on there. Um, and there we go, a bag of parts, including a cable. A set of plectrums. It's nice, isn't it? And. What we've got here in terms of the paperwork, um, we got a, we got a, we got an inventory where prior to starting work, starting the build, two pages, set of instructions, wiring pictures. Yeah. So although it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a manual as such, uh, but it is a set of instructions. Yeah, dude. This this is much better than what you what I was getting in that kind of ukulele kit. Although it was it was a thirty pound <laughs> ukulele kit, but uh, a bit of bit of a bit of paperwork here. So I'll say the company's Coburn. Um, you might see this brand of if you're looking on a popular auction website. This is heavy. This is heavy. It's, 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 that's Les Paul heavy. That is. That is really heavy. Um, <laughs> oh, apparently, apparently, swamp ash. Apparently, swamp ash. Um, wow. All right then. Let's start building a Telecaster. First job. Let's start sanding the neck. This neck is actually finished. Already very smooth. Surprisingly, and. The fretwork is really, is really good. I mean, even yeah, even that. Um, you, I mean, I've not looked at the fret height, but you could almost fit this neck now, almost. So boring job, sandy, sandy, sandy. I'll go up to 600 grit. Right, I've just done my very rough cut of the uh, headstock shape. So I basically drew around the original. I did a, I did a couple of versions of these, and then you know when when you got it on paper, you can sort of sketch in the the, the, the shape you want. Um, this is, <laughs> this is that template, and basically I just used the uh, did you, the scroll saw over there just to um, nip out the bits. It's looking a bit, it's looking a bit ibanez -y here. Um, <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll be, yeah, I'm looking to, I'll, I'll be looking to make that much more rounded and probably even try and round out that as well. Uh, and then for this part, as we can see in the template, I just made a load of these um, sort, of, sort of cuts in there. Um, I think what they're called. Um, and then just then you again use the scroll saw just to go around and then you sort of these bits gradually sort of sort of nip out just as you're going along relief relief cuts I think yeah relief cuts um, probably that's that's probably another way of doing it but that's the way I chose to do it and that seemed to work pretty well obviously you could just use a coping saw and sort of do it all in you know do it do it, do it manually um, but yeah that's a rough shape um, it's all over at the moment looks like a weird kind of knockoff uh, strat you might buy um, like a like a 70s um, brand that you never heard of but there we go that looks it looks more like a headstock 
than it, than it did this morning. Now the job is just to go at it with a Japanese saw rasp, um, which is very, very effective at moving a large amount of wood very quickly. And then I've got a load of these kind of sanding sort of bits of cardboard that I pre prepped up about a year ago that I can still use. And then, yeah, gradually, gradually shape away. If I get bored with the sanding, I'll probably just get the Dremel involved as well. Um, <laughs> you can see how all those relief cuts. Uh, so it's obviously a bit, bit of a mess, but I'll be looking to clean that up. So that's just about um, 15 minutes effort uh, with the rasp. So <laughs> anyone that's thinking I can't possibly do a headstock if I don't have power tools, well, the, the rasp, the Japanese rasp, that will do. I mean, that would you could you could do the entire job with that. Obviously, this bit's going to be a little more tricky, so I might so I might need the Dremel for that bit. Um, but yeah, sort of this end. I say this is literally just rasping and and sandpaper. Needs a bit more, you know. Needs a bit more tidying up. But uh, as I say, in about fifteen minutes, quite happily shape a headstock. <laughs> with this awesome tool it's amazing okay i'm going to call it done for the headstock shaping so that's how it ended up um i tried to sort of go in with quite a deep chamfer just on just on that kind of bottom edge um and have it more kind of more square there just for a bit, a bit of variation a bit of variety um i mean you could go crazy with these headstocks just you know shaping it and designing it so that was mostly done just with a file and sandpaper i did actually get the dremel out just to do that shape for there i suppose you could I mean you could do it with a router as well and do it in like sort of 30 seconds um but yeah it's just so just a bit bit you know with that with that detail there just a bit different um so yeah and then i think finished it with um 600 grit um so I'm, while the neck's off the guitar i'm going to go on and do the any fret leveling so i have just gone over it um and you can see i've, I've uh, marked up some of those frets there just using my fret rocker yeah um and what you're trying to do there is just yeah you're literally identifying any you can you hit go you can hear that and, and that high fret there is causing the rocker to, 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 to rock. Um, so there's various tools I'm going to do. I've got some fret dressing files there. Who are they from? Um, Chris Alsop, um, who makes luthier tools. Um, I've got some, I've got a, a, a fret sort of file there. It's a cheap Chinese one. And then I've got a nice end sort of... Um, file there from crimson custom guitars um <laughs> this is my own tool i made out of a bit of plastic piping that i'll just go along and and, and do it sort of uh, the angled filing and some fret rubbers so it's quite it's quite involved and i'll even probably polish them with a bit of auto salt as well so it's a pretty involved process but um yeah but you know since since i've got a brand new nice neck i might as well do a proper job so that's the next job mm -hmm.